The Oscars are over and what an event it was, so sit back and enjoy some quality chat about the best films of the moment. I'm Natalie Gale and this is Real Talk. <laughs> Presenter Jimmy Kimmel kicked off the 90th annual ceremony with a politically infused speech, praising the more diverse nominees of this year's Oscars. The awards held in the Dolby Theatre California cost the Academy a massive $44 million to host, including all the related events like the $1.5 million after party. There was also long overdue improvement in the inclusivity of the voters' lineup, with 39% women and 30% people of colour now on the panel. But enough about the ceremony, let's talk about the two hottest best picture contenders. Here's a quick reminder for you. So Mildred Hayes, why did you put up these billboards? My daughter Angela was murdered seven months ago. It seems to me the police department is too busy torturing black folks and eating Krispy Kremes to solve actual crime. When he looks at me, he doesn't know how I am incomplete. He sees me as I am. Joining me in the Oscars discussion is BBC Radio broadcaster and film critic Guy and Karen, a film journalist. Hey guys. Hi. How are you? Very well, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for joining us. Now, Del Toro's The Shape of Water ousted the hotly contested three billboards to win the Best Picture Award. Do you guys agree? I was really disappointed in a way, but it wasn't surprised because a lot of my friends who actually vote for the Academy were going, this is an amazing film and it's just so astonished. Mm -hmm. And it was... Uh, the feeling over in America was very, very different than it was over here. I mean, we loved Three Billboards. Personally, I thought Get Out was an astonishing yes. piece of work. And I'm glad that we got nominated, but I really wished it would have blown them away. Mm. Yeah. Get Out was a fantastic film, but The yeah. Shape of Water, it was lovely. It just, there were key tenets missing, especially in the plot development and the character development. As it got on to the third act, this fantasy adventure started to unravel, mm -hmm. but there wasn't enough character development to allow us to empathise with those characters when they're in positions of peril, mm. which often makes the film lose its feeling. Mm -hmm. But it was a lovely film, don't get us wrong. It was a beautiful tapestry of colour with blues and greens yeah. and in this dystopian world, but there was just something missing in the plot. Yeah. You mentioned Get Out. Is that a mm. notable movie for you? That, that's really... Amazing. Probably yeah. my... I mean, I, I love Three Billboards and I know a lot of people loved it, but I've, I've watched a lot of these films more than once and I suppose mm -hmm. maybe people at home would do the same. Yeah. But um, Get Out really held up for me upon repeated viewing and also I just thought it was really fresh and exciting. Yeah. It reminded me of Wicker Man and it made just... It was logical. Mm -hmm. Any film that takes you out of watching it, for example, there's a killer in the house, but you're running upstairs, like, no, <laughs> no, you would run outside. Yeah. And that was the great logic yeah. of, of Get Out. Yeah. And it was surprising, and it just took twists and turns, and I don't know, it was just really terrific. Yeah, I agree, yeah. What about you, Guy? Anything else? Uh, well, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I absolutely loved it. I thought there were some wonderful themes running through it about race and uh, the lo loss and mm. you know, Frances McDormand, she had grief worn into her face as if she'd really lived the experiences yeah. that Mildred had. And then all of these characters were just intertwined with moments of dark humour, mm -hmm. which sort of kept the film grounded. It wasn't this emotional balloon that just flew up into the air. It was kept tied down by this humour, which kept it relatable. And it was just a thoroughly enjoyable film. Mm. Yeah. It was really wonderful. The one thing that I'm concerned about that one is that it's not going to hold up over time. And that's the test. Sure, you yeah. watch a film like five years later and you go, you know, really, it wasn't as good as I thought. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we've heard from the experts, but do everyday cinema goers agree? We went to the Odeon Cinema in Hatfield to find out. Um, I saw Star Wars. Planet of the Apes. Baywatch. Baywatch. <laughs> I don't Baywatch. Pitch Perfect 3, always in my heart, and um, well, Baby Driver was really good, even though it came out last year, I still always watch it all the time. I watched Call Me By Your Name uh, quite a few months ago, and that was a really, really good movie. Um, a genuine love story, very romantic, very capturing. Well, 
I know Coco won Best Song, but I really feel Great Showman was definitely robbed. <laughs> definitely robbed. So that song was amazing. And I do, I do love the Coco song, and I have a lot of meaning behind it, but This Is Me was just top notch. Pacific Rim. Oh, there's an animated Spider-Man coming out, which I'm very excited for. Greatest Showman. I think I must be the only person left that hasn't actually seen it yet. So I'm really looking forward to it. I've heard some really good songs in it. I think you'll agree that 2017 was a great year of progress in film. And in 2018, it looks to be continuing this progress with some fantastic titles ahead. I mean, look at the excitement Black Panther has caused. <laughs> Quickly, it has become the highest grossing film of 2018 with a current box office of 1.2 billion and that is set to rise. Personally, it is one of my favourites. What about you guys? What films are you looking forward to? Well, you mentioned Black Panther there and mm -hmm. there's Avengers Infinity War coming out very, very shortly and that's yeah. going to be fantastic. There's mm -hmm. going to, it's, it's bringing together this decade of superhero films into this one massive final peak mm -hmm. that's going to knock the franchise into the atmosphere. Yeah. And that's, I just can't wait. It's going to be brilliant. What character are you, if you were going to put yourself? Well, I, I love Thor, but oh, I don't yeah? think I'm quite a Thor <laughs> in real life. I can so. see that. I can, what about you, Karen? Yeah, I was told I'm Iron Man, but I, I, God only knows why. Oh. Uh, because of the suit hanging. <laughs> what about you? Oh, I don't know, really. Mm -hmm. Maybe Spider-Man. Oh. I like all that leaping around. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That'd be good for me. Yeah. What about you, Karen? What films are you looking forward to? Um, well, I'm, I'm, the can lineup this year sounds amazing, including well, a nice return for, for Spike Lee with Black Klansman, which I love. It's just like one word, Black Klansman, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. And there's also something that's filming uh, soon at Leavesden, which is the Six Billion Dollar Man, which is a remake of an old 1970s television show. So that's going to be very exciting. That's by the director-writer of Wild Tales in Argentinian. Oh, nice. Mm. There's a French film coming out later this year as well uh, called The Guardians, it's Le Guardien. Mm -hmm. And it's based in France on a farm in mm -hmm. World War I. And it explores the relationships between different generations in the family as mm -hmm. the younger generation go off to war to fight. And some of them don't unfortunately come back. So it's exploring those, the emotional toils that are felt by the older generation, trying to manage a farm at the same time. It's a really lovely film. Mm, excellent, guys. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Thank you very much to Guy and Karen for joining us. We'll see you next time. I'm Natalie Gale, and this has been Real Talk. Good night. <laughs>